And Tourism and Wildlife Cabinet Secretary Najib Balala recently ordered for the removal of a high-end tented camp in the Masai Mara National Reserve, saying it's blocking wildebeest crossing during the migration season. Now, on the ground, however, the CS's instructions are yet to be implemented with the Narok County Assembly choosing to establish the facts first. Well, owners of the Mara Ngeche camp, valued at nearly 300 million shillings, say the events of August the 14th, 2020, seen in a video that has gone viral of the beasts climbing into the camp have never been experienced in the camp's 10 years of existence. Uh, Sam Gituku was recently in the Mara and brings you the Mara Barricade. Yeah, but this is horrible. Oh no! They should never allow this camp here on the crossing side. It's a video that has caught and held public attention for days now. Hundreds of tweets and social media threads of condemnation of what appears blockage of a wild beast crossing path by a human establishment. Tourism and Wildlife Cabinet Secretary Naji Balala galvanized the furore when he tweeted on the 5th of September, quote, I have discussed with Narog County Governor Samuel Tunai about the calm built beside the Mara River blocking the wild beast crossing. It's very disturbing and we expect the governor to take action and have the camp removed. The CS added, quote, I have also insisted that we need a Masai Mara National Reserve Management Plan that will not only enhance biodiversity, but also protect our wildlife migratory corridors from greed, end of quote. We hit the road in search for the truth. The camp is located in the depth of Masai Mara National Reserve. To get there, you go through the second Ani Gate that welcomes you to the Savannah Wilderness, home to at least two of the big five and dozens of wild animals, but notable for the wildebeest crossing spectacle every year. We are here in search of a camp that we only learnt of from the viral video. It takes us nearly four hours to locate it, but not so easily. Not many of the wardens and security officers inside the National Reserve are aware of the route, just a faint idea of the aerial direction. We lose our path several times, finding ourselves in other totally unrelated camps. In this side of the Mara, there are about 22 permanent tented camps for tourists. We have to cross the rivers, afraid of missing our path and the risk of the bewildered hippos enjoying the cool of the waters in their pools. And since we had to inquire of the route from different officers in the park, what moves first and reaches the camp managers? When finally we set the Mara River, our hopes are lifted. But to our root shock, we are not welcome. At least, not today. A host of locals are guarding the one pole barrier that we later learned was 1.5 kilometers to the camp's reception. They tell us the camp has since been closed down and all staff and officials left. And as we wait, a motorcade of Narrow County Assembly Tourism and Planning Committee members enters the camp. We later learned they were holed up in a meeting with the camp's management. Never mind, we had been told there was no one. Attempts to negotiate our access proves futile. After three hours of waiting, we have to leave and return another day. On the second day, it takes us a similar journey. Easily missing the route, but we eventually get there. On this day, there's no pole in the way. We are welcomed by the camp's executive director, Naji Popat. And, uh... The Mara Genche camp is at the junction of Mara River and Talek River. The Mara River has seven main crossing points for the wildebeest migration. We head to the controversial crossing point. This is the point that the animals can be seen attempting to climb, but according to the management of the camp, this is not a usual crossing point, and therefore the staff can be seen chasing them away for the safety of their clients. What remains now are the footprints of the struggle that must have been. This is the first time it's happened. Uh, from what I learned from my staff on the ground, um, the wildebeest were actually trying to get um, across to the other side of the river. And there was a number of vehicles that were parked there, which we are still questioning as to how those vehicles got there, because there are no paths or tracks on that side. Um, and they were blocked and they turned and tried to run into here. After the cabinet secretary announced concurrence with narrow governor Samuel tonight to have the camp removed, the following day, the camp management says 
they were informed of an impending demolition. The only thing we got was a telephone call from the park administrator saying that our camp was going to be folded up. We have received nothing in writing from, from the county to, stay, to state either that we should, we should fold up or that we should stop operations. According to official documentation supplied by the camp management, the Marangenche Safari Camp came to being following a decision of the defunct Narrow County Council that in 2006 granted a 33-year lease subject to approval by the Minister of Local Government. That approval was communicated in a letter dated 3rd of October 2008. Almost two years later, a letter was released from the Local Government Ministry communicating that then Deputy Prime Minister and Local Government Minister Musala Mudavadi had approved the County Council decision. The letter reads in part, quote, being a portion of the reserve comprising by measurement 25 acres or thereabouts within the Mara Game Reserve, now referred as Mara Ngenche Safari Camp to Mara Ngenche Safari Camp Limited. It was signed by PN Muridia, a senior principal state council for the permanent secretary then. Speaking to Citizen TV, former Deputy Prime Minister Musale Mudavadi says that his was just a procedural action with the due diligence and responsibility of the authorities in Narok. For such an establishment to pass, it must get an approval from the National Environment Management Authority showing whether it's fit for the wilderness. A letter signed by engineer A.M. Karaoke for then Director General has been supplied. In November 2011, the Commissioner of Lands in a letter signed by Otieno Apida issued the lease to the safari camp at a cost of 60,000 shillings to take effect from 3rd of October 2008 for a period of 33 years. On its part, the Gencha camp was required to erect tented camps with a sleeping accommodation of 25 tourists. They were required to seek further approval if they were to put up more than 30 beds. They were also granted exclusive business rights with the Narrow County Council undertaking not to establish a similar camp within three square kilometers. At the camp, there exist 12 tented camps with a minimum bed capacity of 24. The tent houses fully kitted with necessary ablution and power source. Travel website booking.com shows that a night would cost a couple with one child up to 2,600 US dollars, equivalent to 275,000 shillings a night with the current exchange rates. If you were to, for instance, fly in and then be on what we call a ground package, which would include uh, game drives in our vehicles and, uh, and transfers between the airstrip and the camp, then you would pay a couple of hundred dollars more. For locals though, it would cost just below 20,000 shillings per person to eat and sleep at the camp for a night. Sometimes it costs more. Extra charges accrue if a guest has to take game drive to the tune of 25,000 shillings per person. A lucrative business it would appear, especially if foreigners are the clients. The camp is owned by Atua and Copa Africa of five partners. Popat tells us four of the partners are Kenyan Indians in a local that he names John Oletome. Also the claim that was made on the video that went viral was that it's owned by some, some Britisher or some foreigner. It's, it's the furthest thing from the truth. It's, all, it's owned by, by Kenyan citizens. The contract between Narrow County Council and the camp requiring that out of all tariffs on sleeping and food, 10% are paid to the council in the first 10 years of lease. In the next 10 years, a percentage of 12.5 accrues while in the final 13 years, the camp will remit up to 15% of its earnings to the county government. According to the Control of Budget reports, Narrow County is among the biggest collectors of local revenue. In the last financial year, the county government targeted to collect up to 3.1 billion shillings. By the end of the first nine months, in March 2020, they had collected 2.1 billion shillings, majorly from tourism activities. Even though the performance by March was a reduction from the previous year, Narok is among top three counties to register highest percentage in collection at 68.5% of target. Only Nairobi and Mombasa counties collected more money than Narok in absolute terms. Since C.S. Balala's tweet, Governor Samuel Tunai is yet to act to remove the camp. Instead, a county assembly committee resolved to conduct investigations and file a report within two weeks. But they appear to disagree with the pronouncement to remove the camp. We might demolish that one. It happens another one tomorrow. We end up losing everything. Apart from this particular hotel, we want to look at the broader view of all the hotels along the Mara Belt River. We want also to ensure that uh, in the part of the management of the Mara, we ensure that we protect those areas where there are breeding zones, high zones, 
and several areas within the Mara. With the CS having raised questions on the place of the camp at a time there are efforts to secure the migration routes, it begs the questions. Was the CS out of tune with reality when he called for removal of the camp? Or did the past authorities allow the establishment of a camp at a highly lucrative location with hidden agenda? Are these wrongs that must be corrected? Governor Samuel Tunai failed to respond to our questions, ignoring requests for an interview. Sam Gitukusuri TV.